Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video here, I'm going to be doing something that I don't recall doing here on the channel, so this here is going to be a first. This is going to be covering an application, but this is going to be a dual generation and dual console tutorial, because I'm going to be showing you all how you can do this not only on the original Xbox, but also right here on the Xbox 360. This here is going to be covering Exton or Xbox Disk Over Network, which came out this year from developer Eaton, the same man behind Fat Explorer. Now, for those who don't know, Exton is an app that runs on your Xbox that exposes devices over the network. It provides the ability to perform IO operations at a raw level using a simple protocol. This essentially means that using this program, Exton, in combination with Fat Explorer, you'll then be able to mount and navigate your drives native on your computer pretty easily over your network while your Xbox and Xbox 360 are running. And to show this here, I'm going to be doing it on both systems at the same time. If people are wondering why they might want to do this here, well, you just have to set it up one time and after you do that, you can then, like I said, navigate drives over your network pretty effortlessly within the Windows File Explorer itself. You do not have to mess around with FTP connections because this is not FTP, and you also don't need to use something such as Neighborhood for either of the consoles because this is not Neighborhood either. So in in order to do this here, you're going to need a few things. The first thing you're going to need is an Xbox or an Xbox 360 console or even both and they must be able to run homebrew. For the Xbox, that means you're going to need a hard modded system, a soft modded system, or even a system where you're just able to boot up into a configuration temporarily to run some homebrew. For example, if you're going to use something such as Skeleton Key, it actually has Xdon built in, and you can use that on a completely stock console. If you're using the Xbox 360, yet again, you're going to need a system which is capable of running homebrew. So this could be a hard modded system such as a JTAG or an RGH, or you can even use something such as Bad Update, which is actually what what I'm using right here. The system itself is not modified, however, I am running Bad Update, which allows me to run custom dashboards and homebrew such as this because you are going to need that homebrew level of access. It's also worth noting that whichever system you're going to be using for this needs to have network access on your own local network because, well, it's right in the name, Xbox Disk Over Network. So if your console is not on your network, this is not going to work. Now, like I said, for the original Xbox, you could use something such as Skeleton Key if you're going to use a USB adapter and a compatible USB drive. Otherwise, if you don't have that, like you have an already modified system on here, for the first time you set this up, I'm sorry, you all are going to have to use FTP just for the initial setup. We have to get Exton on there somewhere. I'm personally going to use WinSCP, but once you do it one time, you don't need to use FTP again. The Xbox 360 does make this easier thanks to its built-in USB port, so you can use FTP if you want to on the Xbox 360, but you could also just use a USB drive and copy-paste the file over. It's pretty simple. So with that all sorted out, we're going to need a few downloads here. The first thing we're going to need is, of course, Exton itself. You can scroll down here to the download section, and you can download it for the original Xbox and or the Xbox 360. 60, depending on what you're going to be using here. You can go ahead and download it for both, but keep in mind these are completely separate files, so the Xbox versions of course are installed on the Xbox, and the Xbox 360 version is going to work on the 360. Pretty self-explanatory. You're also going to need the latest build of Fat Explorer. For this, you can click on 3.0 beta up here. You can check and see what new options and such are available here, but once you can scroll down, you're going to need to download Fat Explorer beta, and you need to make sure you have the .NET desktop runtime already installed. This is a Windows application, so you must have a Windows computer or a Windows VM running. Now, if you've never used this before and you're not sure of your bit setting architecture, Keep this in mind, if you're using Windows 11, download the 64-bit versions. If you're using anything prior to that, I'd recommend download the 64-bit versions, and if they don't work, download the 32-bit versions. And finally, at least to get this file transferred over to an original Xbox, if you don't have a way of using a USB drive on there and adapting it, for example, you can use WinSCP or whatever your favorite FTP program is going to be. Again, if you really don't want to use this here, you just need to do it one time to get Exton transferred over. Alright, so first of all, let's go ahead and get this sorted for the original Xbox here. Do keep in mind, you are going to have to have your Xbox 
up and running and on your network. You can see here in the bottom right corner of my screen, I do have an IP address, so you're going to need to take note of your IP address, your local one, and keep it in mind. What you can do is take your XDON for original Xbox zip file, right click it, and extract it into its own folder. Once that's extracted out, I'm actually going to rename this to XDON. We're just going to keep it short here. And inside of here, once you open up the folder, you're going to have two files. There's going to be a readme. When you check this out, I recommend you give this a once over here. There's a lot of really good information on this. And the second thing we can do is rename the XDON XPE. I'm just going to rename this to default. So keep it simple there. Once we have that sorted, if you're using WinSCP, go ahead, download, install it, and then run it. From here, we can make a new session. It's going to be FTP, no encryption, and the host name is going to be that IP address. The port will be 21, and then the username is going to be Xbox, and the password is going to be the exact same thing. We can keep it pretty simple. Go ahead, log in, wait a few moments, and as you can see, if it's connect successfully, you should get something like this here. Now, if you have a E drive or even an F drive, it depends on where you want to put it, but typically everyone's going to have the E drive. You can go into the E drive, go into either the applications or the apps folder. I'm going to pick applications and then just drag and drop that XDON folder and let it upload. Once it's uploaded, that's really all there is to it. We can now come back out here and we can disconnect. At the console, you might need to relaunch your dashboard, so you can go to Applications after it's relaunched and find XDON. Once you see that there, all you need to do is tap the A button and let it load. And here we go. There's not much else to it here, but it's just going to show Xbox Disk Over Network started and ready for connections. And there's only one thing you can do with the controller, which is press B to exit. But we don't want to do that, so we're just going to keep this up and running here and keep your controller to the side. For the Xbox 360 version here, it's going to be a little different. You just need to get your zip file and then you can right click and extract it into its own folder, XDON for Xbox 360. Once you have this folder, go ahead and open it up. You're going to see a readme here yet again, so I would recommend giving this a good read and once over because there's a lot of good information right here, even stating some of the things it does not interact with, such as you cannot touch the NAND flash or the disk drive with this. We can go ahead and close out of here though, but you're going to notice two folders. One of them is a live folder, so meaning this is going to be within a games on demand container or a live container or uh, something similar to like an Xbox Live Arcade container. And then there's going to be the XEX version, which is just going to be like this. If you're going to use the XEX version, I would recommend renaming this to default yet again. So if you want to transfer this over through USB, I already have my USB drive set up here, and there's a couple ways we can plop it in. The first one is going to be the XEX version. If you want to use this, it's just a raw file version of it. You can rename this here to XDON, just to give it a little bit of a classification. Right click, copy or cut this out. Then go into an applications or an apps folder. I have my applications folder here and paste it in like so. Otherwise, if you want to use the live version here, you can go in here, find the content directory, find the zeros directory, and find this folder at 58444F4E. Right click, copy this out. And within the content folder of your drive, go to content, the zeros directory, right click and paste. That's all there is to it. If you're wondering what the difference is between the two of these here, there's really not going to be a difference in terms of functionality. It is completely dependent on your preference. Really, the live version is going to show up in the stock dashboard once you're in a modified state, and the file version, you have to be in something like a custom dashboard to launch it or something like XEX menu. That's really about the only difference, but functionality-wise, they're going to be the exact same. Once that's been copied to your USB drive, we can right-click, eject this, and take it over to our console. I'll also include this as an option if you're wanting to use FTP for the Xbox 360, since that is a valid way of doing so. If you're using something such as Aurora, you are going to need to note down your IP address and then open up your client. Just like I showed with the Xbox, you can open up WinSCP. It's going to be FTP, no encryption, punch in the IP, port number will be 21. And depending on your setup, at least if you're using Aurora, by default, it's going to be Xbox FTP for the username and password. If this doesn't work, it's just going to be Xbox. So you can try the both of them, but like I said with Aurora, I know it's going to be Xbox FTP. Once you have that set up, you can click on Login, and it's going to show your drives right here. Now, just like before, we can open up the XDON folder, and there's going to be a couple available here. From here, it's the same thing. You can navigate over to HDD1 if you have a hard drive already installed. If you have an apps directory, if you need to make one, you can go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and make one here just as an example. Within there, go to the apps directory, Find your XDON folder, the one with the XEX, if you want this one. 
drag and drop it, that's all you need to do. Otherwise, if you want it to be the live container, you can go into content, zeros, and the same thing here, live, content, zeros, and then just drag and drop this one over whichever option you're looking for. Either way, for the Xbox 360, we also have a couple ways of launching this. What you can do, once this is transferred over or on your drive within Aurora, you can press the back button, go to your file manager, go to your USB drive if you copied it over there, and you can go over to the applications directory, find Xdon, and then launch the default executable. Otherwise, if you want to use the live container, you can actually launch that directly from the original dashboard. I'm going to show you all by going to system settings here. And then once it exits out, we can come over to games, my games, and we're going to look for Exton. There we go. Whichever way you want to launch it, it's completely up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and launch it through here. And here we go. It looks a little bit different and the functionality will change a tiny bit because it looks the same, but it is automatically going to sign you out of your profile. And then it's going to tell you avoid using Xbox 360 neighborhood while Exton is running. That's going to be really the main difference between the Xbox and Xbox 360 variants. But as you can see, it looks the exact same here. The only thing you can do is press the B button to exit. But what you need to do is once you have Exton running, that was the hard part. That was the hardest part of getting this all set up here. Have Exton running, keep your console up and running and on your network, and let's go back over to the computer. Now, if you've never used Fat Explorer before, go ahead and find the .NET runtime and run this. You will have to install this here. I've already installed it before, but it's a pretty standard install procedure. Just click on install, walk through the process, and then close out of it once this is done. And once it's installed, you can go ahead and delete the .NET runtime. As for the zip file, you can just right-click this and extract it out right here. Open up the Fat Explorer folder that you've now got, and once you're inside of here, scroll down, look for the Fat Explorer executable, and double click it to launch it. Now if you've never used Fat Explorer, keep in mind this is a paid software, but there is a 7 day free trial you can use on here. So after 7 days, of course, you will have to buy it if you want to continue to use it. Now I myself really like the software here, and I've gotten a lot of use out of it, so I have a license for it, but it's going to be completely up to you if you want to get one or not. I'm not saying that as a sponsored bit or an affiliate or anything, I just really like the software and I've been using it for years. The other thing you'll need to keep in mind though is once you have either the trial or the license on here, you will have to install a driver the first time you run this. Once you install that driver, restart your computer and then open up Fat Explorer yet again. Once everything is set up, you can click on devices. It might show you something like this initially if you click devices, but let it go ahead search and you should hopefully see your drives right here. You can see that these are not physically connected to my computer because instead of showing an actual path, it is showing an IP address as well as a port. So do keep in mind that you will need to have connectivity across your network between the different devices and it's going to be over port 1000. Additionally, if you do not see your consoles right here, you might have to click on this option right here, which is Exton Direct Connect. You can click on this, and from here, you can punch in the IP address of your Xbox or Xbox 360 directly, and then click on Connect. However, with a recent change to Fat Explorer, it has made scanning for drives much better. Now, what you want to do is if you want to take either of these drives, for example, or I'm actually going to mount the both of them just to show you all how this works here. For the original Xbox, I'm going to click on this and load device. I notice the original Xbox does chug a little bit longer here. But from here, you have several options. So you have the content partition, the dashboard partition, temporary files, XYZ, even the F drive if you have that available. I'm actually going to be mounting my F drive because I want to transfer a game over. So you can select your partition you want to mount and then pick which drive letter you want to mount it on. The X drive is fine for me and I'm going to click on Mount Extra Data Partition F on X. Once you do that, this is automatically going to pop up and check this out. If you come back here, look at that. This is over the network right here. So my original Xbox is not physically connected to my computer. This is all over my network, but I can go ahead and enter this drive and you can see that I can now navigate this drive like an actual physical drive is hooked up to my computer. So once it's set up, it just makes it more convenient and cleaner than FTP, at least in my opinion. We could even do the same thing with the 360. You can see I still have the original one hooked up, but I'm going to click on the 360 one, click on load drive. You can see this one is a bit faster there. 
And for this one, I'm actually going to mount the content partition. You have several available and I'm going to mount it under the G drive. And boom, just like that, this one I just upgraded to an SSD, but you can see I have all my content right there. And if you just look at a screenshot right here, you can't even tell that this drive is over my network. This looks like I'm taking my drive and physically connecting it to my console. But I promise you, both of these drives are on consoles running and working right now, connected through my network. Now, just as an example here, I do have a couple games I want to transfer over. One of them is going to be for the Xbox 360. I do have Banjo-Kazooie, so I'm going to go in here, and this is an Xbox Live Arcade game. So I'll go ahead and copy this out. I'll go over to this drive, which I know is for my 360. Inside of here, I know it needs to go into the content directory, the zeros directory, and once I'm here, I can right click paste. And you can see right here, it does depend on your network speed, but there we go, it's done. Now actually speaking on the network speed, some people might be wondering why transfers over here are slower. That's because the original Xbox and the 360 are both limited to fast ethernet, meaning that if you're going to be transferring over like one game or a few files, this is fine. But let's say if you want to transfer over like 300 gigabytes, you might need to physically connect that drive to your computer to get better speeds. Because with these ones here, you're going to be limited to 100 megabits a second or 12 and a half megabytes per second. You're not going to be able to get faster than that. However, I do have another game I'd like to transfer over. This is Grand Theft Auto 3 for the original Xbox, so I'm going to copy that out and Actually, wait, I just realized I can copy this to both systems. So you know what? Screw it. Let's go ahead and do it on both. I'm going to go to my Xbox 360 drive, and we can create a new folder here. Why not call it OG Xbox, something like that. And within here, I'm just going to right click paste and let it transfer over. Now this is an SSD, so I know if I take it out and hook it up directly to my computer, th this would have been done by now. But like I said, you're just gonna have to keep the speeds in mind here. But again, you can see here, this is all being done natively through the File Explorer, thanks to the power of that Explorer. And so now that's done, so I'll go ahead, go to my original Xbox. I have a games folder here, and I already have several games, but I'm going to go ahead and paste it and do the exact same thing. Looking at it here, I'm getting about like one or maybe like half a megabyte slower per second, depending on which files are being copied over, but it's going to be the exact same process. So there we go, it's been copied over. The nice thing is too, you could also always do this in the reverse order. So if there's ever any data you wanna back up from the original Xbox to your computer, you could just do the same thing here, like go in here, go into your games, and you can copy something out to your computer itself. Of course, the same thing on the 360, we already know that. So once you're all done here, you can close out of this, go to Fat Explorer, go to your devices, and we're just going to unmount the both of these here. And once those are unmounted, we can close out of here. And they're no longer showing up on the computer. So let's go ahead and go back over to the consoles. This one's over at the Xbox 360. Once you're done here, you can press the B button to exit, but it's going to tell you cold rebooting since a disk write happened. So that's going to be the only difference there. Just let your system restart. The original Xbox does not have that notification, so the same thing here. Once you're done, just press the B button to exit. Now that the original Xbox has rebooted, check it out. I'll actually show you all the uh, file system itself here. If I go to File Explorer, go to the F Drive, Games, check it out. Grand Theft Auto 3 is sitting right there. So I can go in here and run it. And over at the Xbox 360, I will have to change my paths here uh, just because I added in a new folder, but I'm going to go ahead and go to HDD1, OG Xbox is there, 2 is fine, and we're going to go ahead and do a scan now. And there should be two new games that show up. But there's going to be a few more since I also have Xdon on here. So one of them is coming up here. We oh, actually both of them. So we have Banjo-Kazooie as you can see, and we have Grand Theft Auto 3 loading in after everything else downloads. Boom, there you go. So as you can see, we were able to get these transferred over just fine across two different generations of consoles right here at the same time. Pretty awesome stuff in my opinion here. But if you want to give Xdon a try, you now know how to set this up. So have fun exploring your file system and being able to extend Fat Explorer even further. Either way, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too.